Now, GMOs, the primary GMOs are soy, corn, cotton, canola, sugar beets, and alfalfa. All but alfalfa, more than 90% of the crops in the United States are genetically engineered. Fortunately, there's no popcorn that's GMO, and sweet corn can be GMO, but it's a lot less than 90%. Now, all of these six crops are sprayed with Roundup. They're Roundup-ready crops, specifically engineered not to die when sprayed with an herbicide, which would normally kill it. And this is so farmers can weed more easily. Now, in addition, there's corn, cotton, and in South America, so, uh, soybeans that are engineered with a gene from soil bacteria to produce its own toxin called Bt toxin. And Bt toxin kills insects by poking holes in their guts. And the US regulatory agencies and the Canadian regulatory agencies and others that approved Bt crops did so on the false assumption that Bt toxin, which is used in its natural bacterial state on crops, it does kill insects that way, they said it's only effective on insects and has no impact on humans. To get to that conclusion, they had to ignore many peer-reviewed studies showing that it did damage the walls of the intestines of mice, it did elicit immune responses in humans, in fact, it pokes holes in human cells, the same type of holes it pokes in insects to kill them. So I was being interviewed by Dr. Tom O'Brien, who's a gluten guru. You may know him. In fact, I originally contacted Tom O'Brien many years ago when I was invited to give a uh, press conference with Mark Hyman and others in New York. It was called Beyond Gluten Sensitivity or Beyond Gluten. And my hypothesis, which I hadn't heard from anyone yet, I think I was the first to bring it out, was that GMOs and Roundup predispose the body for gluten sensitivity, creating leaky gut, activating the immune system, causing uh, problems with the microbiome. And he confirmed that when I described what the body went through with GMOs and Roundup, he confirmed that yes, these are preconditions for gluten sensitivity. And he developed a product that digests gluten within 60 minutes before it leaves the stomach. And we were talking about that, and I said in this interview, well, what does it do to Bt toxin? Bt toxin turns out to be very resistant to digestion, which makes it more probable an allergy. Well, his product digests all the top eight allergens within 60 minutes, and I, he said, I don't know, no one's ever done a study on it, let's find out. So at the end of the, we never actually published that video because we were waiting for the, the study to happen. And so in the healing from GMOs and Roundup, he announces the results that within 90 minutes, 60% of the Bt toxin is broken down. 99% of all the other allergens, the top eight allergens are broken down, but this is how resistant Bt toxin is. So it's good that it's broken down, it just means that it's so resistant it is much more likely to be an actual allergen. So by the way, I asked these practitioners to give specific recommendations, specific products, specific procedures and protocols that we can all do to heal from GMOs and Roundup. See, normally as a, running a nonprofit, I've shied away from naming brand names, etc. In this, it was tough for me in the beginning, but I had to reverse it. I said, tell me all about your product and your clinical experience and your research, because people want to know what to do. Now, there's another GMO type that uses double-stranded RNA. And the apples and potatoes that are engineered not to turn brown when they are sliced use this double-stranded RNA. And I remember talking to Dr. Jonathan, I think it's Landsman, in Mexico at a UN conference, and he had been pushed out of the USDA because he wrote an article basically saying, we have no way that we can evaluate the safety of products with double-stranded RNA. The reason is that little 
little tiny pieces of double-stranded RNA match up to the code in DNA and silence the gene. But it's not just the, its own DNAs or its own cells double-stranded RNA that does the trick. Mice were fed double-stranded RNA and it silenced a gene in the mice. Honeybees were fed double-stranded RNA and within weeks more than 1400 genes change their levels of expression. Double-stranded RNA has the capacity to reprogram our DNA. And Sayerji, who runs Green Med Info, he had done a deep dive study of double-stranded RNA, as I had. So in our conversation, we talked all about double-stranded RNA and why friends don't let friends eat the Arctic apple or the innate potato the double-stranded RNA genetically engineered crops.